everyone, Genome here, coming to the next how-to video. Uh, I technically shot this already on the Terminator 2 cabinet, but I really wasn't happy with that video. There was a lot of issues going on, and uh, so I may or may not show it. But anyway, I was going to take you real quick on how to install some of the lighted button kits uh, for the RK1 Up. Uh, more specifically in the Miss Pac-Man machines. The last upgrade I need to do to it, so I figured I might as well go ahead and do it. Maybe I'll record while I'm doing it. Uh, these can be found at Do Yourself Retro Arcade. There'll be an affiliate link below, so make sure to click on it if you're gonna if you're interested in purchasing these. And uh, yeah, I'll get a little credit for it, so that'd be even better, right? So uh, it's really easy to do. I've done this on several of my machines already. Uh, there are some nuances to a couple of these. This is one of those machines that's gonna have some nuance to it, and I'll explain all that. But he also has some very good how-to videos. Uh, on their site itself, so don't just take it from me. Uh, his are probably actually better and more clear and concise, but I'll go through the nuts and bolts of it and show you this is not uh, an upgrade you need to be afraid of doing yourself. You don't have to be an electrician to do it. Um, it's, it's really easy. So anyway, let's go ahead and get to the video, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All right, be right back. All right, so what you're looking at right now is basically everything you're gonna need to do this project, and a lot of this actually comes with the unit. Um, the only tools you're really going to need are, of course, a Phillips head screwdriver of some kind to either get the back and the control panel off, but uh, I think it's always a Phillips head. Um, a pair of nips, cutters, uh, are really handy because a lot of times there's zip ties inside there. You can also use a razor knife or some sort of cutting instrument too, but you got to be really careful with that. We're dealing with delicate wires in there, so I definitely recommend some cutters if you have them. A pair of needle nose because sometimes... Um, Getting the old wires out of the PCB board is not that easy, so <clears throat> you need some delicate tool like that to get into those nooks and crannies. And really, that's about all the tools you're going to need. Uh, having some small zip ties in hand is going to come in handy, or maybe even some electrician's tape for wire maintenance. Uh, but everything else kind of you need comes with a kit. So basically, you're looking at the lighted buttons here, and. Um, Good returns, and you'll see they look a little bit different uh, than the two prong ones you're gonna be pulling out of there. The gray ones here, let's see if I get this thing to focus. The pieces, the prongs that are coming out of the gray are actually the ones that go into your PCB board. Uh, that's the one that actually has the button control, so it closes the circuit when you press down. And the outside of the ones are the actual power for the LED, so don't get those confused. But this particular kit uh, had needed six buttons. It technically wasn't designed uh, for the Miss Pac-Man machine, but you know it, it's always the same for the most part. You just gotta watch out for the lengths of some of the button runs. So if you can, try to match up the right kit with the right unit. But if not, you can mix and match. Uh, just make sure if you need any ex exceptionally long runs to let Shane or something know when you order. Um, comes with the uh, power. You're going to be uh, branching off power from the main power supply with this, the splitter that comes with, and you might need a three-way splitter if you're also going to power up an uh, aftermarket uh, marquee. But it comes with a two-way splitter. I'm sitting there holding it off camera, sorry, uh, for running power. But basically, you plug this in here, and then you uh, wire each button for power directly from that. Now, uh, the last thing I'm going to show you for this, of course, it also comes with the, uh, you can just hand tighten these on. The, the rings to hold the buttons on. They're a little different than the clips that are on the old ones. Uh, last thing I'm gonna show you here is, this is what's called the um, power switch hack. It's $10 from, excuse me, that was in your computer, that was mine. Uh, this is the power switch hack. And I highly recommend this for every cabinet that can run it. Now, not every cabinet can run it. If you have a three prong power connector that goes into PCB board, this will not work. Uh, it also won't work with this Miss Pac-Man because it has this weird proprietary, or it's almost like an RCA. It's a weird power hookup. Uh, so this will not work. But basically what this unit allows you to do on most cabs is bypass um, these things getting constant power, right? It'll turn, the switch that turns the unit on will also turn on the marquee and whatever else you have plugged into it. So in this case, the lighted uh, buttons. But highly recommended. Um, they also have a toggle switch, it's just five bucks, but then you gotta mount it and all that and it's still, you have to hit the switch. I would just recommend getting this uh, if your um, unit can run it. So make sure to check before you order that. That's all you need and it's a really simple process. So we'll go ahead and get into it right now. All right, so making sure the power is off on the unit, preferably unplugged. Uh, let's go ahead and loosen up the control deck screws. There's four of them to take off on these units. All right, once you got those loosened, uh, gently take out the control deck, being careful that there's always a ribbon cable attached to the back, as long as well as some other cables. So you'll see it or not, but. 
this this one's funny because it has a strange power thing and I'll explain more on that later but this certain one's the only one I have that's like this and it makes it kind of a pain for some of these upgrades so being careful not to stress anything or uh, um, pulling too hard on any cables go ahead and remove your power and your ribbon cable and uh, it's now free as you can see down there I've already done some work on this cabinet and I got some extra wiring in there but so this will come right out so we'll go ahead and take this to a place where you can work at it and then we'll pick up there all right so after you got the panel pulled off I like to put it on a cushion so you don't crush your joystick and there's like a little there's divots in here so let's go ahead and get the uh, the screws that are holding the cover on off <laughs> And you can use power tools for this, but I mean, it's like eight screws. <laughs> so. Okay, all those wanted to go on the floor. That's fine. And there we go. Okay, as you can see, it's not incredibly complicated in here. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit better for you here. All right, so here's the buttons we'll be replacing today. Uh, keep a close track of where everything goes, and I'll kind of go over some of that as uh, we continue. As you can see, this is a three-pin power source, and it has this weird, it's almost like a like a BNC connector. It's, some, it's really weird. Anyway, so I can't do the power switch hack, but basically all your color-coded lines are what you're gonna be swapping out with these generic ones that are here. Uh, for instance, this one I told you a little bit earlier, so be mindful, try to get the right kit if you can, matched up with the kit, because like this button is a kind of a long distance for the standard length ones that come with it. It would work, but it'd be a little bit tight, so I'll, uh, Shane was nice enough to throw in an extra long cord on one of these, so. We'll be good there. So here's what I told you, you might need the snips. A lot of times, so actually I like when they do this. Um, this gate looks like really torn up. I should have replaced this gate. It's a four, set up as a four way right now. So um, sometimes they're zip tied. So you wanna be really careful when you cut these. Just use the, um, the tips of the nib or the nibblers there, if you will, and uh, remove that because you're gonna have to get that off there anyway. And they actually did a nice job of tying this one up. A lot of times they're not inside. Only thing is they didn't trim the edges, which you'll do when we retie them, if we do. So let's make a little bit of room here. And figure out where we want to start. Well, I have all this off. This is a great time if you want to change out um, the springs, by the way, and the gate. I mean, you already got it off there anyway, so, and those are pretty cheap upgrades you can do. I've already actually changed out uh, the spring on this, so. Some of the gates are actually set up as eight-way instead of four-way, depending, because they're multi-cades. So figure out what your main game is, and you can turn your gate accordingly how you need it, if it's adjustable. All right, so let's get into the buttons that you came here for, right? So, what's going to be the easiest to get to? We'll just start on, nah, we'll start on the white side. Those are easy. So... I like to do these one at a time so you don't get confused to where these go. Now these are typically color coded on these boards. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Looks like this one is. So just to keep track of where they are, I like to go one at a time. And sometimes they don't like to come out that easy. Don't pull too hard. I like to push down on the, on the board at the same time. And this one's already gonna need a little assistance, I think. So this is what the needle nose are for. Trying to crush anything. Sometimes they need a little assistance getting them out of there. Okay, pop that off. These uh, switches are just have their two, I don't know, tabs you gotta push in at the same time and then push through. And it's out, there you go. Now you can, I like to set these aside and I put them in their own bags when they're done, in case I ever sell it. Um, I can just give them the originals. Now, um, I want all of these facing the right direction, the same direction. So I'm gonna put it to where, usually um, there's more wiggle room on the power side, so I'm gonna switch this around so that um, the switches that are going back to the board are facing in, basically on some of these longer runs. All right, so you just swap that back through. Put you one of the little ring nuts on there, lock nuts, whatever you wanna call it. And I'll always just hand tighten them. These buttons, like I said, don't get much of a workout, okay? And since um, I wanna keep these in order, I may actually have to put a longer one on that one too, but we'll see. 
I mean, typically speaking, you want the least amount of slack you can get, but you don't want them to get too bent either. Okay, this one should be fine. Okay, and keep cable management in mind when you're doing these. Since these are going to the board, they're going on the inside ones and the gray plastic. And they have positive and negative on this one. So if you do them all the same direction, you don't think about it much more. The positive in this case is on the top. So we're gonna put the red on top. Be so careful when you're putting these on the post. It's very easy to bend both pieces and or break. Okay. One down. As you can see, this is not exactly the hardest thing in the world to do. So if you're nervous about doing it, and I'm sorry about these angles, uh, don't be. <laughs> okay, just push in on those two tabs. Sometimes you really got to crank on them. And push right through, get out my way. And I'm actually replacing these with purple, but you could go with white if you want to stick with the color scheme they used here, but you can basically pick any color of the, I think there's six different choices or maybe it's eight different colors you can choose for the LED. So don't feel like you're constrained to uh, just make the same colors, pick what you like. Okay. I'll just run this one over the top. So put the negative on first. Doesn't really matter. I don't know that they're polarity sensitive on these, but they're marked as positive, so I'm gonna go positive, negative. All right, purple side's already done. So here we go, let's uh, keep cranking on here. And I'm gonna work my way out. Probably gonna need some needle for this one. You actually want some smaller needle nose than this, but I can't find my other one, so. Don't pull too hard on these so you don't want to break it in case you ever want to go back to them, right? Okay. Now I'm going to switch these around this time so they're facing in, less of a less of a reach for the, the, the wires. So, so keep that in mind. When you put them on some um, some of these cabs, when the spacing isn't so far apart, I just put them all the same exact direction. That way, I don't think about where the cables are going or the wires. And when you have kits that have uh, shorter run wires like these, of course, use the shorter ones on the closer ones. So and so now we got. On the right side is going to be my plugins this time, and positive is going to be on the bottom, and negative here. Like I said, be very careful when you put those on. You don't want to break them. Okay. Next is the purple. I've actually pulled this out on one of my other ones before. The casing but the the two posts, uh, the metal contacts inside stayed in there, so there's no problem there, but be real careful with how much pressure you're putting on. Sometimes these really don't get pushed, there we go. I think they sell like a little thing to put these, uh, Nuts on a little plastic one for like three bucks. So if you think you'd be doing this a lot, might be it might be hoove you, as my old drill sergeant used to say, to uh, nab one of those. But in my experience, I haven't had to snug any of these too incredibly tight. So and we'll do the long run last. Another thing I didn't mention is, um, or actually I think I mentioned it on a T2 video, but not on this one, is before you go in there touching any PCB boards or anything with RAM or whatever that in your tools, make sure you're grounded. Ground yourself on a piece of metal somewhere. 
uh, no static discharge to ruin your day. Now let's see how long this run's gonna be. I might need to use one of the longer ones here. Nope, all right. And I know this is boring, but I'm doing this real time so you can kind of get an idea of this really isn't the longest thing to do. <laughs> um, I'm almost halfway done here, so. Okay. Wow, I thought I'd need a long one on this one, but oh well. Sorry, if you're watching this chain, sorry about that. Thank you for setting the wires for me. <laughs> I thought some of these are just set up so weird, I don't know. I'll see about tidying these up uh, when I get the rest of it done. Okay, so your buttons are now wired for play. So let me get this down a little bit here. So now we have to give them some juice, right? So now keep in mind, and I have a 3 8 drill bit. I'm gonna be using to try to get this through that might fit it, it might not. You're going to have to modify uh, the case, the cover, to allow an escape route for this new cable and any new power cable you run. Uh, technically speaking, I guess you don't have to put the cover back on there, but there's just no sense in not doing it. So it takes just a minute or two, but and we'll get into that. So I'm going to start in the area where I think I'm going to do, and I'll just probably run it out right here. So I'll just take the closest one here and start working my way down. And I'm, think about your wire placement too when you do these. You're not locked in, you can always change your mind, but why, why go back if you don't have to? So find your positive, negative, once again, red positive, black negative. And each one of these has these little, um, nice little sleeves on them. Hopefully you can see that, they're clear. And you push them up when you're done, when you get them seated. Okay, oops, let me turn this around. These have a tendency to bend a little easier, I find, than the uh, other posts, so be really careful with these. If it looks like they're not going on, just snug them on there with a um, pair of needle nose, is what I do. But get down close as you can. This one's fighting it, so I'm gonna ease it down. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to grab the actual sleeve and push down until I hear the little click. There it goes. You probably couldn't hear it, but it clicked. And then push the little sleeves down so the metal does not touch back and forth. This is the power, so you don't want any shorts going on here. And then we're going to start working our way around. So I like to find the next closest one if possible but not where it's a strain for to plug in because you got plenty more to choose from. I just like to keep things tight if I can. Now we're just gonna daisy chain right on around here. Actually, no, I'm gonna go up through this way. So think about where your joystick's gonna be. You don't wanna be hitting wires, so. And basically we're just gonna go keep going right down the line like this. As you can see, this is not difficult. A little time consuming on some of the cabins with more buttons. But you kind of get into a zone here and it doesn't take that long. Just 
make sure to push down the sleeve when you're done. Okay, that's that side. Now you're gonna have a couple of them that are gonna be skipped, and that's fine. Sometimes they get all twisted up though. Actually, you know what? I am just gonna run it around, then I'll uh, tape it down real fast as I'm going around it this side. So now we have all of this extra, so I'm gonna zip it up real fast. I don't know if you can see, hopefully it's on camera. Okay. I'm gonna cut the excess off of there. One thing you wanna do is when you have these left over, if you don't cut them out, Make sure all these sleeves are covering all the bare metal on these connectors. You don't want them touching and shorting things out. And I would get in here when you got them loose like this. I don't have any handy with me, but um, if you have some electrical tape, look where your screw holes are. And um, just kind of put things out of the way. And then that, I'm just gonna put a little piece on that. Make sure it doesn't get caught up when you try to put these back on. Okay, that's it. It's wired. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need to just kind of flatten those down a little bit, but you can tie all that up if you really want to, make it look nice and neat and pretty. Um, I'm gonna go make a hole real quick. And I guess I can show you how to do that too. And we're going to, well, just make a hole <laughs> in your um, in your casing and then just big enough for this to run out. And then I will uh, show you the rest of it here in a second. All right, so we got the hole drilled. Make sure you run your uh, power line through there first. And we'll go ahead and put her on there, line her up. with the ribbon cable hole and all that and the power supply. Now if you really want, you can test this out before you screw everything back down. Might be a semi good idea. Just so you're not, in case you miss something. But I've already done this a few times so I don't think I'm gonna have any problems. Normally um, at this point, maybe even before you put the case back on, um, you could do your um, Power switch hack if you have one, which I highly recommend if your cabinet will allow for it. But since we're not doing that, we're basically done. And well, you don't need to be screw the rest of these in. But anyway, I'm gonna go back over to the cabinet and we'll be mounting this up next. Now, since I have a lighted marquee that I had to add on um, as an aftermarket, I'm actually, this one, the two uh, way splitter is not going to work for the power. You'll need a three-way. I had several of these already because I knew I was gonna do these projects. So make sure to order one of these if you are also adding a uh, light-up marquee or something else that's gonna need power. So you'll need at least a three-way. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Okay, so uh, you don't have to always take the back of this off if you already have it plugged in, but I just did so y'all can see what's going on. So here's the back plate off. Here's your three-way uh, power splitter. Just pick one. So it doesn't matter which one. And run it up where the original power went in to the unit. Now, if you have a light up marquee uh, that you added on, that's gonna go on one of these. And your other one is going to be, I'm just bringing this around here so you can see what's going on. Um, your button kit or your, your deck, okay? Let's see, you're not gonna be able to see that, but basically I got plugged in here, direct, and once you plug the power into this female connector off that dongle there, as you can see, 
hopefully see anyway. We got power. They are lit and the unplug, there you go. So they're off. So now you know you're hot. So basically that's all you gotta do uh, back on this side. So now I'm just gonna put the backpack on here, run everything back through and hook everything back up and I'll show you the final product. Okay, so got the back put back on and uh, we are ready to hook everything back up. So you'll just need, make sure to have the one leftover male off the three-way splitter on this unit. The weird looking power supply and the ribbon cable. So those are all gonna have to go back on. This part can be a little bit of annoying sometimes, a little bit annoying sometimes, but it shouldn't be too bad. I guess we'll just do the long one first and light should come on here, I'd imagine. Yep. All right, so we are hot. We have liftoff. We have clearance, Clarence. You like now we're gonna put the ribbon cable back on and then finally the power. Trying to beat up <laughs> your unit like I do. Ripping cables easy. This power one's a little tricky. Because of where it is. Make sure all the cables look good. Go ahead and set it back down in there. Now before you tighten anything, see if it turns on. <laughs> okay, looking good. Go ahead and put your bolts back in. And we're gonna make sure all the buttons work. You should probably do that before you tighten down, but I'm pretty sure everything's gonna be fine. Haven't had an issue with any of these button kits yet. Not working. Don't over torque these. You might have to take them off again sometime. There it is. Let me get the lights and then uh, that's it. That's as hard as it is. It literally, it looked worse on the video, but it's like 30 minutes on something this size. Uh, the bigger cabinets with like 14 buttons take about an hour. A lot less than that when you don't have to film everything and, and move everything around for shots. But yeah, super simple hack. Uh, make sure to go to the link below if you're interested in this kit and use the um, affiliate link. Also, I forgot to tell you on these, we also have this little bit of protective film on there. You can just peel those off too. And they look even cleaner and crisper. Buttons feel pretty good as per usual. I have these on about half my cabinets now. Maybe more than half, I don't know. And there it is. All right, so let me get the lights for you and uh, let me know what you think. So there it is in all the splendor. All right, well, thanks for sticking with me for this long video. Hopefully it helps somebody out. Don't be afraid of it. You can do these upgrades yourself. So, all right, thanks again for watching. And until next time, this is Genome 